even if the guy's found guilty. The full attorney fees are paid. I say, wait a minute, uh, there's got to be something wrong with that. Right. Alan, Alan, did you want to respond to that? No, there, is any more there are some things that, you know, as I look to it, that, that are important. We as the legislature, and the street panel said, and maybe the senators and included, we frown significantly or heavily upon people who lack of their insurance and their insurance. I mean, there are some people who. Yeah, you know, what's that? For lack of a better term, do what? Who embarrass? Who embarrass, who embarrass the institution of the legislature. Okay. I mean, there are some people whose actions, their egos get in the way. Uh, they don't listen to maybe decisions or whatever. There, there are some issues that have occurred. But there's some things in here I really like on page 11. Like, no legislature, while serving, serving an office, may act as a lobbyist. Yeah. Oh, great. But, but you have to say lobbyist where? Right. Because well, yeah, yeah, lobbyist yeah. acts to New York and does. Right. I mean, in ECA, you can't lobby an issue. You can't be paid to lobby an issue for the body. That's wrong. That, I, that's good. Okay, a legislator, legislator, while serving the office, may not accept a campaign contribution where such a contribution has been promised and intended to quid pro quo. Yeah, so that's, that's good. There's a few people in Louisiana and a few other places that understand what the federal, 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 federal system is like. Well, that's a federal issue. You can't do that. For example, and likewise, you, if you're a lobbyist, you can't give commissions on something. How do we get around it? I don't know. I hope you find that. And then a legislator may you know, either offer or give advice or consultation, be paid for your advice on a passage of legislation. I mean, those are, that's good. I mean, as far as, and that, that, those are the three things that I would say. That's how it but from that perspective, we try in quiet ways to police ourselves. And although the, I think, and I look at the issues that are before you, particularly the, the, the editorial that came out, a lot of this is focused on less than five people and their behavior, whether right or wrong, I'm not here to judge. But as a legislation as a whole, I think we try to be very ethical, and we do have ethics training, contrary to what we said tonight. We do have ethics training. And you have to sign in and sign out. You know, a few people can get to show up or whatever, I don't know. But so from that perspective, I think that the legislature is working to police its own body, which is its constitutional responsibility. There are, sometimes it takes a couple to pull them when you think about it, those who want, and that, you know, without mentioning, some people are not re-elected, some people's behavior has changed. And a few years ago, I know of a guy that served as the president of the Senate, had to go to a couple of senators and said, either you're a lobbyist or you're a senator, you can't be both. So she was never asked to resign. Never asked to resign. Right. Yeah. Hi, thank you. Jason. You're on the clock as well, Jason. <laughs> I am now. And just for the record, I'm actually not here as a representative of the radio station. This is really kind of the camera. But you come front so we can <laughs> you come front so that uh, you can oh, you photograph your video you. yourself. Uh, <coughs> my, my question is more of a line. Jason Williams. Williams. Jason Williams, where do you live? I from Utah. I from Utah. I'm I'm Utah. I'm I'm Utah. I'm you're a, you're <laughs> a uh, radio guy. Yeah, I work for TV and New Play. Yeah, just, just kidding. <laughs> there are not many of us around. They call me the token liberal. <coughs> but uh, my, my question, uh, well, it's a couple of things because as I've listened here, uh, first off, to the, to the previous comments, I think it is important to remember that even if you are only talking about five people, they are five people that, for the most part, uh, got off. <laughs> So I think that that's an important thing to remember as people uh, address this. And that then raises my question, which is, if not this initiative, if, if something different might be better, uh, when can we expect that from legislators? Because I think, from my perspective, this initiative exists because legislators have not done it. So when could we expect something along these lines from legislators? And, and if that's not going to be soon, then when the Constitution was drafted, there were a lot of people that said, this is not a perfect document. I disagree with it. We've got to start somewhere. 
And that's kind of how I see this. So if, if not starting somewhere, uh, when can we expect that to come from within the legislature, the legislature itself? Yeah, I, I'd like to piggyback that, uh, and I'll take 30 seconds. If not this, then what can we expect? Uh, uh, Representative said we police our, ourselves, I'm, I'm sure you do. And uh, as I said earlier, uh, I, I, you know, I didn't say this earlier, you find yourself in a real dilemma. And I did run for the legislature, one of my we had one of my weaker moments, but uh, <laughs> but uh, but I do think if not this, then what? And I realize that Kim and Alan, is, and, and I don't know Alan nearly as well as I do Kim, but you know there there are people out there who believe that something needs to be done. So if not this, Jason, then what? And it's also worth pointing out that we ask from the you know being residents of Cache Valley, we ask from a unique position, I think, where we have never in my life. We've never had a representative in Boyle and Stanley. And, and we did have, we do have one representative recently who turns out was, now correct me, all right, because I want to be real careful here, that may have been paying himself, or his wife out of campaign contributions, in addition to his per diem and daily rate of pay. Let, let me tell you, uh, let me answer that question because I think there's a misunderstanding. If I take any of these campaign monies and use them personally, I pay full income tax on it. I mean, it's not just a gift that I get. I have to pay full income tax on it. Having said that, you get in the same kind of question about the paying your wife. If, if, for example, I paid a college student to come and manage my campaign, is that okay? Well, what if I paid my wife and she did the same thing? You wouldn't do that. Why wouldn't I? Because you would. <laughs> you haven't. Well, I haven't in, in the aspect that, that she'd tell me no. She didn't want to run down the highway to go home for stupid <laughs> out, but, uh, but therein, well, she's not going to, but therein, one of your daughters might, but therein lies, I think, the dilemma. Uh, I think some some legislators do not hold themselves to the same level of moral, moral yeah. uh, tur turpitude as you do. Or Fred, for example. But if I kicked out $1,000 a month to my wife just to have her money, she did nothing, but that's. Just like if I kick the thousand dollars out to anybody else, but let, let me address one other thing. Campaigning is really an interesting thing. You know what is really campaign effort? If I take my wife and we go over to, to the Providence turkey dip, turkey sauerkraut dip, and I go with Kurt Webb and his wife, and I use campaign money to buy our dinner because we're there mingling, visiting with the province, we're contributing to that, making ourselves known. Is that wrong? Is that bad campaigning? Honestly, yeah, I'd say no. Yeah. I, I, you know, my campaign, I never had enough extra money. <laughs> I had to march, I had to pay for my dinner. Let me talk about the campaign, getting money local. I agree with you completely. The problem is, Kim, I go around to people and I say, I need a donation. They look at me and say, you've got to be kidding. Just don't even worry about the campaign. You're going to win. Don't even worry about it. So I get money from Salt Lake. I used to send it back. And I thought, you know, if, if somebody wants to send me money and I can give it to uh, the middle school at Cedar Ridge, so they can use it for something. That's campaigning for me. The teachers, the kids know that I donated money there. If I can give money to Cosa, to Logan and Skyview and Mountain Crest to go out to Cosa, uh, why shouldn't I? I talk to these people and I give them money. I say, you know, I may have to make charitable contributions because it make it's for partisan political purposes. But I'm giving the money to, to those charities. You know, you say the local school, the, to the state board. If I were drafting it, I would have said to the school board where the legislature is. So that if I ended up with $10,000 in my account, and it, it would go to the local school district, because that's where I live. Why would I want to give it to the state board with $10,000, nothing to them? $10,000 to the local school district or cash to me now. So, you know, that's when I see you're drafting it, that's a change. Now, I guess I can designate it that if I want to change that. But if I die now, then the money goes. Does my wife get to say where it goes? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. And again, I, I read these things with the idea if I had to stand in front of a judge or a commission and explain what it means, see, 